Hi everyone, hope you're having a great day. Ryan Jackson here. Welcome back to the 100 days of 2023 changes to the National Electrical Code. We've made it through chapters one through four, and now we're at Article 500, Hazardous Classified Locations. So we made some changes here, mainly having to do with ignitable and combustible fibers and flyings and class three locations. So let's take a look at 500.5 and see if we can make sense of it. Okay, 500.5 area classifications, really important section in the code. 500.5 tells us which areas to classify, class one, class two, class three, divisions one and two, right, etc. So class three locations are clarified. And I, I gotta be honest here, this is something that we've needed for quite some time. Class one is pretty clear. Class one, division one, division two. Class two, division one and division two are pretty clear. Class three has not been clear for a very long time. And, and I don't mind myself saying that. I, I'm not trying to pick on anybody or saying that Code Making Panel 14 has done a poor job. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying, look, it, it has not been clear for a hundred years. And now they've really made some effort to kind of clarify what a class three location is and what a division one versus division two is. So 500.5D talks about class three. Class three locations are classified due to the presence of combustible or ignitable fibers and flyings. All right, they made a couple of changes in Article 100. They added definitions for combustible fibers flyings and ignitable fibers and flyings. Now, the difference between a combustible versus an ignitable fiber and flying is a, a combustible fiber or flying has an explosion hazard in the air, right? So you've got, you've got uh, combustible fibers in the air and they could explode. That's a combustible fiber flying. An ignitable fiber or flying is exactly what it sounds like. It, it's ignitable, it's capable of being lit, of being ignited. So we've got combustible or ignitable fibers flying. When do you have a class three division one versus a class three division two? Still not perfect, but it's definitely better than it has been. So class three division one locations, 500.5 D1A. Areas where non-metal combustible fibers or flyings are suspended in the air under normal conditions. Okay, so let's push pause for a second. Uh, we're talking about non-metal fibers flyings. If you're dealing with metal material like uh, aluminum or zirconium, things like that, uh, that's going to be a different thing. We'll talk about it on the next slide. So if you have non-metal combustible fibers and flyings that are suspended in the air under normal conditions, all right, that's the big thing is what is the normal condition? If you walk into an area and we're and we're doing some sanding, right? If I'm sanding wood, for example, sanding wood is probably creating combustible dust because the difference between combustible dust and combustible fibers and flyings is simply the size of the solid material. So I'm kind of a woodworker myself and, and I prefer to work on a wood lathe. I'm more of a, of a wood turner than a cabinet maker. When I'm working on my wood lathe, if I'm doing it right, you've got your gouge or you've got a skew chisel or something, and you're making streamers of wood shooting over your shoulders. That is much bigger than combustible dust. That would be an example of a fiber or flying. Now, is that a combustible fiber or flying? Is it actually a combustion hazard while it's flying through the air? Probably not. But the fact that it's present in the air under normal conditions, that's what we're talking about, all right? So non-metal combustible fibers or flyings suspended in the air under normal conditions in quantities that could be explosive. All right, so even when I am really jamming, if I'm turning the bowl on my wood lathe and I am making, I am making the wood fly, uh, is that a fiber flying? Sure. Could it possibly actually explode? No. <laughs> it, 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 it's wood, and it, it's, a fair, it's a big quantity of wood. It's not going to blow up, right? Could you ignite it? Sure. Is it going to explode? No. So areas where it's suspended in the air under normal conditions in quantities that could be explosive. I don't think it's that common that we have class three division one combustible 
fibers flying in the air. Here in the photograph, I'm showing a, uh, a, a factory where they work with cotton, where they process cotton. Now, with cotton, fine, whispery kind of cotton, billowy cotton that is all over the place under normal conditions, that probably is a class three division one. We're also going to classify any area where abnormal operation or failure of equipment would release fibers and flyings and ignite them. All right, so it's not enough that equipment breaking down would release the ignitable fiber or the combustible fiber flying. It's not just that it would release them because if it's an abnormal operation and it releases the material, that's usually a division two. If it's abnormal operation that releases and ignites the material, that's a division one. All right, so we have class three division one for combustible fibers lines. It also goes on to say that, look, if you're dealing with combustible metal fibers and flyings, that is a whole different level of hazard, and we're not even going to call it a class three location. You are going to be in class two. And in fact, you're in class two division one. We do not play around when it comes to combustible metals. All right. If you think about class one versus class two, Class one is hazardous due to uh, due to vapors and fumes, right? Combustible liquid produce, produce vapors, flammable liquid produce vapors. Uh, class two is combustible dust. We don't really say that class one is more hazardous than class two, or that class two is more hazardous than class one. They're just different hazards. Now, inside class one or class two, we have division one and division two. Division one is more hazardous than division two, no question. But comparing class one to class two, it's not a different level of hazard, it's just a different hazard. All right, so gasoline vapors versus combustible dust, it's there. you can blow up a building with either one. They're just different. Now, when it comes to metals, um, we do not classify those as class three because a class three location between you and I a class three location is less hazardous than a class one or class two. It, it is, unless we're talking about metal. All right, if we're talking about metal, aluminum dust, things like that, magnesium dust especially, uh, when those things go kaboom, they take down everything within sight. Uh, there was uh, there was an explosion in China a couple years ago at an aluminum uh, a place that that made aluminum alloys, and it completely leveled the place. So, when it comes to metals, you are automatically a class two division one groupie. There is no division two if we're talking about metal. All right. So anytime you're playing around with metal, class two div one groupie. 500.5 D1B, Class 3 Division 1 locations, also include locations where ignitable fibers and flyings are manufactured, handled, or used. All right, so we talked about combustible fibers and flyings, and we said if it's suspended in the air under normal condition and it's ignitable and it's combustible, that's Class 3 Division 1. Or if uh, the equipment can fail, release the material, and ignite it, that's Class 3 Division 1. That's for combustible fiber flyings. When it comes to ignitable fibers and flyings, that's where they're manufactured, handled, or used. That's gonna be your class three division one. Class three division two locations. That's gonna be areas where again, non-metal combustible fibers or flyings are suspended in the air because of abnormal conditions in quantities that could be explosive and areas where accumulations of fibers and flyings do not interfere with normal operation of equipment but could be suspended in the air due to an abnormal event. That's going to be class three division two. So again, we're differentiating between combustible fibers and flyings and ignitable fibers and flyings. We haven't talked about ignitable fibers flyings in class three division two yet. When it comes to the combustible fibers flyings. Class three division two is when we're concerned about suspensions in the air, again, because it's combustible. Suspensions in the air, but not under normal conditions, only under abnormal conditions. Maybe the dust collector stops working, something like that. When it comes to ignitable fibers and flyings, 
Class 3 Division 2 locations are the areas where the ignitable fibers or flyings are stored or handled, but not created. Now, here's the bottom line. I know this is a lot to go over. And, and again, Class 1 Division 1 versus Division 2 is much easier. Class 2 Division 1 versus Division 2 is a lot easier. Class 3 Division 1 versus Division 2 is still kind of convoluted because it's like, well, is it an ignitable fiber flyer or a combustible fiber flying? Here's the thing, if you really, like, this is telling you when you need to read Article 503. Article 503 is not that long. 501 is a huge article. 502 is fairly big. 503 is not a big article, and here's what you're going to find. The difference between a Class 3 Division 1 and a Class 3 Division 2 is not that great. It's really not. So, don't pull your hair out. If you're concerned about misclassifying Class 3 Division 1 versus Class 3 Division 2, that is not nearly as, I'm just going to say it, that it, it's not nearly as important as misclassifying a Class 1 or a Class 2 location. It, it's just not. So take a look at Class 3. If you're really concerned, call it a Class 3 Division 1 because the difference isn't much. All right, we'll see you guys on the next video. Thanks, everybody.